Whiskey, coffee, vanilla. Three magical things in and of themselves, but what happens if you put them together? Are they better than the sum of their parts? How's it going, chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse, and this is Still It, and this is a coffee vanilla whiskey. Pretty freaking cool, right? Uh, no, I haven't just taken a whiskey and flavored it with the other things. The coffee and the vanilla all went through the still in an attempt to kind of, I don't know, make this a little bit more of a cohesive product, make it a little bit more married together and a little bit more true to a real whiskey with a twist rather than, you know, a completely flavored candied whiskey. At the end of the video, I'm gonna give you a quick taste test of this thing, tell you about the uh, really freaking cool things in this whiskey and one slight letdown that I think, I think you could fix. Anyway, enough talk. Let's show you exactly how I made this coffee vanilla whiskey. The heart of this whiskey is made up by the Still Spirits Artisan Whiskey Kit. Of course, you could apply these techniques to any other whiskey you make, so don't stress about that too much. But this video is sponsored by Still Spirits. In fact, it is the second of two videos that are very similar. Uh, just last week, I released a video talking about how I took a whiskey kit like this and used a cold smoke generator to pump peat smoke into it, which was pretty freaking awesome. So if you haven't seen that video, go check it out now. But thank you to Still Spirits for sponsoring these two videos, and of course, for supplying the whiskey kits. So the first step in this process is to make up a whiskey wash. Like I said, go about it as you will. But uh, the thing about these kits is that they have a fair bit of dark specialty malts in the kit. And I mean, those sort of flavors just seem like a match made in heaven for coffee. They're sort of leaning that way anyway. Some chocolatiness, some fudginess, some caramelliness. Mix that together with coffee and vanilla, I mean, how can you go wrong? If you're following along at home, get to that point in whatever way you see fit. But uh, here's where we start in with the coffee. I took one quarter of a cup of coarse ground coffee, just straight up coffee beans, and added it directly into the fermenter. This was my one and only mistake, I think, for this whiskey. We'll talk about that a little bit later on and how you can fix it. Then I let the whiskey ferment out. In my case, that took six days. I gave it an extra couple of days to settle down and clear slightly before whacking it into the T500 and doing a stripping run. I did, however, reserve about four to six liters of the original wash. So I took all of the low wines from the stripping run. I almost never make cuts on a stripping run or, or on low wines. So I took all of those low wines, everything that came out of the stripping run, put it back into the still, along with the four to six liters of reserved wash and, and a short black, so a, a double shot or whatever you wanna call it. Straight black coffee, none of this filter drip coffee nonsense out of an espresso machine. That went into the still as well. Now I love using the T500. I've been using it for some time now and there's two reasons that I enjoy using it. One is there are a lot of people out there that that is the most extravagant piece of kit they've got. So it's nice for the channel to be, you know, relatable to different levels of people. Oh, by the way guys, uh, if you're, you know, at the high end of that, the Genio is right next to me running right now. So you'll be seeing that soon. Don't stress. <laughs> anyway, there are a couple of little things that you can do to the still to take it from being, you know, a, a good home distilling kit up to being really solid. And one of those is being able to control the amount of energy that you put into the pot. Stripping runs, I run at full noise every single time. Spirit runs, I'm generally running it at about 50 to 75% power, depending on what I'm running. For this one, it was running at about 60%. The cuts were really quite fascinating on this. There was a real, graduation of flavors coming off at different points in time. I ended up actually being a little bit cheeky and taking a little more heads than I normally do uh, and cutting off at right around 45%. You may notice, however, that there's been no vanilla in this at any point so far. And the reason for that is, like I said in the intro, I really wanted to put all of the ingredients through the still. I didn't want to make a coffee whiskey and then macerate it with vanilla. It just, I don't know, that didn't quite fit the concept of what I wanted to do here. So what I did is took about 600 mils of the really pure hearts coming off the T500 and whacked those into the air still along with enough water to proof it down to just below 45%. Into the gin basket went one vanilla pod. 
Real vanilla, guys. No exceptions for me on this one. So the bean was split down the middle, the seeds were scraped out, and I smeared the seeds across the mesh on the gin basket for the air still. And then I popped the beans themselves into the gin basket as well, and ran the still. Why did I do this? I did think about putting them into the T500, but I was very worried that uh, a lot of the vanilla flavor would disappear off into the heads. So I didn't want to do that. Uh, with this size of equipment, with this size of run, I don't really have the equipment to shoot the thumper, you know, or, or use a carter head or anything like that. And the other reason was that I just wasn't sure how strong this vanilla, you know, flavoring was going to be. So keeping it separate from the rest of the run means that I can add it back in at the rate or the dosage that I require. Turns out, it wasn't that strong. It was actually right around perfect. So I ended up putting all of that back into the rest of the whiskey, proofing it down to, oh crap, what was it? Hold on. <laughs> I think it was 60%. No, 58%. And I did a quick aging sample on the ultrasonic machine to see how things were going. Spoiler alert guys, it worked really well. So I went ahead and added the same type of wood into the rest of the batch. All right, it is uh, time for a tasting but first a huge huge thank you to the patreons thank you so much guys i get to do this stuff because of you and it was actually one of you that suggested this exact uh combination of flavors i feel like a giant douche because i can't remember who exactly who it was uh if it was you claim responsibility down below this is all your fault anyway <laughs> good news or bad news first guys uh Actually, there's good news, bad news, and good news. So let's give the second lot of good news first, which is that the bad news, I think, could be pretty easily fixed if you're gonna do this at home. So learn from my mistake. <laughs> uh, the bad news is that, well, there's a, there's a flavor in here that I'm not huge on. So let me go through the, the good news first and, and we'll get to that last. The good side of things is that I think this whiskey kit and these flavors are a match made in heaven. This base whiskey already leans very heavily on the, whoops, that was close. <laughs> leans very heavily on the side of darker base malts. So that presents in the base whiskey without any of the other flavors as borderline coffee, definitely some chocolate. And then those flavors smear down into Eventually, you know, the standard whiskey flavors we have on, on, a, on a new make whiskey without wood influence. But in between, we kind of go through almost like hot fudge and uh, caramel to get there. So if you imagine those hot fudge and caramel flavors paired with actual coffee and actual vanilla, I mean, we're sitting firmly in the middle of a bunch of confectionery type things here. Or, or um, a mochaccino, you know, those, those kind of flavors, which is great. And you get all of that on the nose, it's really, really nice. The predominant coffee flavor is, I don't know, man, it's actually really nice. It is very similar to just sticking your face in a bag of fresh coffee. The vanilla is there. It is, to be honest, above, beyond, and just more vanilla -y than what the vanilla I get out of oak is most of the time. But, I mean, that's what we were going for here, right? The whiskey sitting underneath all of that is quite pleasant and it provides a really nice scaffolding to hold the coffee and vanilla as well. Anyway, bottoms up guys. Yeah, <laughs> this is so good. Yeah, this is really interesting. It's um, <clears throat> very pleasant to drink. So as it goes into your mouth, it tastes just like a whiskey, albeit a whiskey that has a stronger than normal sort of coffee chocolate presence. And it isn't until you're halfway through the act of swallowing, even if you hold it in your mouth for quite some time, that the coffee really starts to jump out at you. And it builds and builds and builds, hits a crescendo of the coffee and then morphs into the, uh, the, the hot fudge, the, um, the, the caramel sort of flavors. That slowly dissipates and it sort of goes through a very mocha-like stage into you're left with a slight uh, wood tannin finish, a slight just general oaky finish, and then into the vanilla for quite a long time with hints of the coffee coming back every now and again. 
So, I mean, if you're into coffee and you're into whiskey, this is kind of the thing for you. Unfortunately, there is uh, one kind of small, kind of not so small problem that I should have seen coming and I didn't. And that is, we're getting a fair whack of that over extracted coffee flavor sensation that is kind of like green peppers. And when I say green peppers, I mean green bell peppers or capskins. It's not, it's not a overpowering flavor. It's not the main flavor. It sits honestly below pretty much everything I've listed. The problem is that it just kind of snaps me out of the overly pleasant coffee experience. The good news is I'm almost certain the problem is that quarter cup of coffee beans that I added in right at the beginning of fermentation. That was just silly. I've done exactly the same in beer before. And the same thing happened. I, I don't know why I wasn't thinking of it. If you're going to do this, I still suggest putting beans into the fermenter. But I would suggest doing them more like a uh, dry hop. So you let fermentation get to 90% done and then you pop them in. So for practical terms for me, it fermented for about five, six days and then I let it go for another couple of days after that. I should have put this coffee in on day four, maybe even day five. Honestly, I think if I did that, that green coffee flavor would, um, would not be there. So there you have it guys, 100% uh, worth doing. Learn from my mistake. If you guys have got other suggestions on how you think you could go about this, by all means, drop it in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed this video, please guys, please give me a thumbs up. That really helps. And I'll catch you next time. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya.